Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. I do want to uh, encourage you, if you have not already, to pick up your copy of my book, All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo, and its sequel ebook, All I Needed to Know I Learned from Dragnet. Each of these uh, books takes a look at the career and history of seven great fictional detectives and policemen, and life lessons that can be learned from them. They are available as audiobooks, audible.com or the iTunes store, or also uh, wherever fine ebooks are sold. This will be the last of our uh, Christmas programs for this year, but you can check out all of the Christmas uh, shows we've done on Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Just go to christmasfeed.greatdetectives.net. But now it's time for today's episode of Mystery is My Hobby, and this one is Boston for Christmas. Mystery is my hobby. a year ago this Christmas Eve. Inspector Noah Datton and I had gone up to Boston to attend the famous carol singing festivities at Beacon Hill. Come on, Inspector, let's hurry along. There'll be several thousand people on the hill. We don't want to miss anything. Okay, okay. I'm walking as fast as I can. Say, uh, Bart. Yes, Inspector. Is it true that folks who live on Beacon Hill leave their shades up and their doors unlocked on Christmas Eve? Yes, it certainly is. Why? Why? The Christmas spirit, Inspector. The spirit of goodwill toward men and peace on earth. Uh, didn't know that Bostonians were so trusting. I beg your pardon. Uh-oh, I stuck my foot at that time. You, you were born somewhere around Boston, weren't you, Bart? Yes, in a little town called West Medway, about 25 miles out in the country. Never heard of it. A group of us used to come in every year to hear the carol singing at Dick and Hill on Christmas Eve, Inspector. Oh, <laughs> those were the days. And me? I was born in Brooklyn. We always figured Boston is sort of a small town. It's going to be good to see it all again. The carowers, lighted windows, the bell ringers. Chicago, Philadelphia, Atlanta, all the other small towns. The bell ringers? What the heck are they? A group of people dressed up in bright red costumes and move from house to house ringing their bells and singing, Inspector. It's a very old tradition. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. That's a funny thing about Bostonians. What's that, Inspector? They worry a lot because their traditions don't get around more. <laughs> I see what you mean, Inspector. Well, here we are, Charles Street. Hey, watch the lights, Inspector. Oh, don't worry about me. I've seen a traffic light before. Don't act like it. Surprised to find anything so modern in Boston. Listen, Inspector. Yeah, it's kind of pretty, isn't it? Isn't it? I think they're up near Louisburg Square. I don't hear any bells. It's talking to you, Bart. Hmm? Oh, hello, Sonny. What's in your mind? Uh, are you Barton Drake? Must be somebody from West Medway. Yes, I'm Barton Drake. How did you know? Well, I read a lot of your books, Mr. Drake, and wow. your picture was in the paper this morning. They told me that you were going up to the carol singing tonight. So, being a detective yourself, you trailed us, eh, Sonny? Oh, no, sir. I figured you'd come along this way. I've been waiting here since 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock? Say, Bart, you must be frozen stiff. Oh, no, sir. I'm not very cold. Anyway, it won't matter if Mr. Drake will, will help us. Help who, Sonny? What's wrong? Well, it's my sister and dad. Me. Well, all three of you, eh? What's your name, Sonny? And what's the trouble? I'm Jimmy Christian, and... Well, my dad, he's in trouble. Bad trouble, Mr. Drake. Well, tell me about it, Jimmy. Well, well, my dad... Well, you see, my dad... Yes, go on. Dad, he... He murdered a man last night. Jumping Judas Buck, your dad, isn't it, Jan? Well, he didn't really do it. I know he didn't. My dad couldn't hurt anybody. He's the most most wonderful man that ever lived. He, he just wouldn't hurt anybody. I'm sure he wouldn't, Jimmy. Inspector, suppose we stepped over to that drugstore in the corner and order up some hot chocolate, hmm? 
I'm sure our young friend will find it easier to talk if we get in out of the cold. Yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. I always say hot chocolate is just the thing to bolster up a man's spirit. <laughs> Another, Jimmy. Oh, no, thanks, Mr. Drake. Gee, that was swell. Uh, maybe we ought to have a slug of soda pop or something. Uh, Jimmy looks to me like a man whose eyes are getting bigger than his stomach. Well, I, I guess I did eat more than I should. You see, Dad hasn't worked for a long time. And, well, not much, I mean, since Joe was killed in Germany. I don't blame Dad, though. He and Joe were, well, he and Joe were sort of important to each other. I see. Is, um, was Joe your brother, Jimmy? Yes, sir. He's a lot older than me, though. And then there's my sister, Mary. She's older, too. So you and your dad and your sister live together, eh, Bob? Yes, sir. Tell me, Jimmy, uh, your dad's sick, hmm? Well, sir, sort of. I mean, he is a lot of the time. You see, after he heard about Joe... Well, you see, Dad's got some friends that he meets at a place called Harry's Bar. Now, uh, that's it. But, uh, huh? All right, Jimmy. Now, you tell us what happened last night. Well, sir... Dad was with some of his friends until kind of late. And then he started home alone. At the corner of Pekin and Foster Street, there was a man... Someone who... jumped a man. Yes, sir, that's it. And I guess they had a pretty terrific fight. And your dad killed the other man, Jimmy? I... I guess so. Hmm. It was in the papers this morning. What was in the papers? That a man was found on Pekin Street near Gloucester. And he was pretty well cut up, too. Well, he's figure he was hit by an automobile. Do they know who the man was, Jimmy? No, sir. They hadn't found out this morning, anyway. And nobody knows that your dad was in the neighborhood except you and your sister? Huh? No, sir. Well, then, for crying out loud... But your dad huh? is quite sure that the dead man is the one he had the fight with. Oh, yes, sir. He says he's committed murder and he's going to give himself up to the police. Huh. He says that's what Joe would want him to do. He says he could never live in peace having a, a murder on his mind. That's too bad all murderers don't feel that way. I could retire. Jimmy, uh, has your dad uh, been to the police yet? No, sir. Mary and I made him promise he'd wait till after Christmas. We know he didn't do it, sir. Well, Dad just couldn't kill anybody. And then you read in the papers about Barton's Day. Oh, I read about you, too, Inspector Danton. Is that a fact? Well, well. <laughs> what did it say, huh? Was my picture in a paper, too? Uh, you know very well it was, Inspector. You bought at least a dozen copies. Oh, now, Bart, let the boy talk to me once. You so. can ask him well, to tell you all about this later, but right now we've got more important things to talk with Jimmy about. Do you, do you mean you'll help Dad, Mr. Drake? Oh, boy, wait, wait, wait a minute, help. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Let's not jump to conclusions. Perhaps we can't help at all, but I think we can go out and have a talk with your dad. It's only a little further. You're not getting tired, are you, Inspector Gampy? Me? Tired? Walking? I love it. That's why I have flat feet. <laughs> have you always lived in this neighborhood, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Just down here's a little way. Down this alley? Well, it, it isn't really an alley yet. Well, Dad says it used to be a famous tree. Oh. Uh, here we are, up in the steps. Well, Jimmy, I see you've got a Christmas tree in the window. Oh, yes, sir. Mary and I saved up and bought it. We figured if we had a tree and things, well, it'd make Dad feel better. Looks kind of nice, the that? Come on in. Boy, Mary will sure be surprised. She said I was crazy if I thought I could get Martin Drake to come here. Don't forget me, Bob. Hey, Mary! Dad! He's here! Martin Drake is here! Jimmy, what in the world? Jimmy, who are these men? It's Martin Drake and Inspector Noah Danton. Don't you recognize them? I told you they'd come if I asked them. I told you. Good evening. I suppose you're Jimmy's sister, Mary. What? Why, it is Bob and Drake. Well, sure it is. Who'd you think it was? Oh. And this is Inspector Danton. Oh. Well, won't you sit down? I, I hardly know what to say. Jimmy, you shouldn't have done this. Well, sure I should. Mr. Drake will prove that Dad didn't murder anybody, won't you, Mr. Drake? Uh, well, I don't know, Jimmy, but I'd uh, like to talk to your dad if I may. I'm sorry Jimmy put you to all this trouble, Mr. Drake, but I'm afraid there's nothing anyone can do. On the contrary, I think your father'd be making a mistake if he gave himself up to the police pleading murder. Now, wait a minute, Bob. Murder's murder. Not unless it's deliberate, Inspector. According to Jimmy's story, Mr. Christian was attacked. 
If death resulted from the fight that followed, it could reasonably be called self-defense. I knew it. I knew Mr. Drake would figure out something. I'm afraid Jimmy didn't tell you everything, Mr. Drake. Oh? You see, the police believe that the man who was found on Beacon Street this morning was hit by an automobile. Yes, I know. Jimmy told us that. Sure, I did. I told him everything. Please, Jimmy. Dad feels that sooner or later they'll catch the hit-and-run driver, Mr. Drake. He feels that someone might go to prison for his crime. Well, why doesn't he wait until that happens? It's hard to explain, gentlemen. Ever since my brother Joe was reported killed in action, Dad's conscience has been bothering him. Somehow he feels that what happened to Joe is his fault. So he gets pie-eyed every night at Harry's bar, eh? Don't you talk that way about my dad. He only does what he does because he feels so bad about Joe. Okay, Bob, okay. Is your father at home, Miss Christian? It won't do any good to talk to him. I know it won't. I'm sorry that Jimmy put you to all this trouble. Well, since we have gone to the trouble, I'd like to talk to your father if I may. I'm sorry, but he... Who wants to talk to Noel Christian? Dad! Hi, Dad. Hey, guess who these men are? They're Barton Drake and Inspector Noah Dad. Matt, who? Barton Drake, the criminologist? Yes. That's right, Mr. Christian. I'm Drake. This is Inspector Noah Dan. Hi. So they found out, huh? They know I'm a murderer. On the contrary, Mr. Christian, we hope to prove that you're not a murderer. Well, gentlemen, I'm ready to go with you, and it's a relief, believe me, it is. It isn't easy to live with one's conscience. But, Dad, you don't understand. These men are here to help you. Help me? <laughs> There's no help for a murderer, daughter. Isn't that right, Inspector Dan? What? Oh, sure, yeah, that's right. No help for a murderer. You're back. You see, the inspector knows. If Joe were here, he'd understand. Joe is... Was my son, gentlemen. Since he was killed, I, I've been trying to live as I know he would want me to. By forgetting your responsibilities toward your other children, Mr. Christian? Why the idea? Young man, you don't realize what you're saying. I realize perfectly well what I'm saying, Mr. Christian. There isn't one man in a million who will give himself up to the police, claiming he was a murderer, especially when there was a chance of his getting out of it unless he were a complete fool. I don't think you're a fool, Mr. Christian. Hey, you can't talk to my dad like that. I wish not. Oh, I even ask you. Mr. Drake, I think you'd better leave. Very well, Miss Christian. No, no. No, wait. Yes. Your words interest me, Mr. Drake. You say I'm not a fool. Why, then, do you think I'm giving myself up to the police? I think you're affecting a pose, Mr. Christian. A pose? Yes. Please understand, this is only a theory of mine. Frankly, the moment I saw you, I lost interest in what first appeared to be an interesting case. Go on, please. I can sympathize with your grief over the loss of your son, Joe, but I cannot sympathize with the cowardly way you have thrust the burden of your grief on your two other children. What do you mean? Just this. You attempted to drown your grief and drink. Possibly you lost your job as a result. You were forced to move into this squalid neighborhood. Then you became ashamed of your weakness, and pride forced you to use Joe as your excuse. Is that all? Well, oh, Mr. Christian, that's only a beginning. You felt that sooner or later... Mary and Jimmy would begin to question this grief of yours. So last night, you were attacked. This morning, there was an account in the papers of a body being found near the spot where you'd been set upon. And so? And so you saw an opportunity to make a hero of yourself by pretending your grief over Joe's loss was forcing you to give yourself up as a murderer. You don't think uh, I am a murderer, then? Nor do you, Mr. Christian. You feel confident in your mind that the police will laugh at your confession. On the other hand... You will have gained the adulation of your son and daughter, who will continue to worship and support you. That's a pretty harsh accusation, Drake. Yes, the truth is most always harsh, Christian. You're a weakling and a coward man. Your only salvation lies in yourself, not in that. Uncle Dad, it's a policeman. That's right, boy. A policeman looking for a Mr. Noel Christian. Oh, no. I'm Christian. What do you want? Ah, it is a pity what I wanted this Christmas Eve, Mr. Christian. Oh, go on. Speak up. What is it? Well, sir, it seems, Mr. Christian, there was a barroom brawl at Hardy's bar last night. You were there, were you not, Mr. Christian? Well? And it seems you punched the nose of a gentleman named Charlie Augustus, Mr. Christian. He deserved it? Oh, oh, I have no doubt but that he did, sir. But tell me, did he deserve being murdered now? Murdered? Yes, sir. On Bacon Street and across where his body was found. At first, we thought it was the work of a hit-and-run driver. It was, wasn't it? No, no, Mr. Christian, that's where you're wrong, I think. Witness is that odd who claimed that this child, Augustus, followed you after you left Harry's bar in a fight with you. That's a lie. It wasn't Charlie. No, no. Who else was it then? Charlie's body was discovered dead. Ah, pity it is, Mr. Christian, on a Christmas Eve, too. For the last few years, in you for the murder of Charles Augustus. Come along now. <laughs>
can say is, but this is a heck of a way to spend Christmas. Sorry, Inspector. That's a help. You invite me up to hear the carol singers and what happened. You tell me that on Christmas Day we'll go out to your old hometown. And what Inspector, happened? Inspector, if you prefer you'll... to return to New York, the train's leaving the South Station every hour. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, Inspector? What do you mean, well, Inspector? Are you returning to New York, or are you uh, sticking on the job? Sticking on it. You're a cute kid. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector, you're terrific. I knew you wouldn't desert me. Oh, you did. Yeah. Well, don't think for a minute that I'm giving any dog Oh, of course not, Inspector. <laughs> well, here we are. Here we are where? Harry's bar. Come on, Mr. Gwynn. I don't know what you expect to find in here. Well, the joint's empty, anyhow. Yes, I see it is. However, since the door was unlocked, someone... There's someone. Oh, morning, gents. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Will it be? Good morning. Nothing to drink, thanks. Are you, uh, Harry? Yeah, I'm Harry. How'd you know? I never seen you before. I... Wait a minute. You do look kind of familiar. The guy must read the paper. I'm Barton Drake, Harry. This is Inspector Noah Dan. Hi. Hi. Drake, huh? Oh, sure, sure, I remember. Now your picture was in the hail the other day. Oh, mine was there, too. Was it? Yeah. I didn't see it. Huh. <laughs> We're investigating a murder, Harry, and we thought that perhaps you could help us. A murder, huh? Who got that name? A man named Charles Augustus. You know him? Charlie? Oh, I'll say I do. He was a troublemaker. Always starting fights. Couldn't hold his leg at. I... Who knocked him off? We don't know yet, Harry. I understand there was a fight here two nights ago. Ho, ho, ho. I'd say there was a build. Yeah. There's most always a fight when Charlie's around. Well, and uh, what started this fight, eh? I don't know. Charlie made a crack about no Christian kid, Joe, the one who got killed overseas. Mm-hmm. Some of the boys took exceptions to it and jumped him. Some of the boys. He wasn't Christian here? Sure, sure he was here, but he didn't do nothing. He was swacked. Oh, he was. Yeah. Okay. Anyone get hurt? What? No more than usual. Charlie got cut up a little, I guess. I... Only let him fight three or four minutes. Charlie's kind of sickly and can't take too much of that pummel. What happened after the fight? Nothing. Charlie got sick to his stomach and went outside. Didn't come back. And what time did Noel Christian start the home? Oh, I see. Oh, it's about 11 o'clock, I guess. <laughs> he was pretty well planted. Do you happen to know where the Christians uh, live, hey? Eh? I don't know. I've walked Noel home enough times. And uh, how does Christian get home when you don't walk him? Well, he's got a sister. He goes straight down Gloucester, crosses Beacon, and keeps on at the river. Yeah. The river's sort of a landmark, for him, see? So he keeps it in sight till he comes to the Esplanade Shell, then he goes up and across Charles. Oh, oh, you never missed yet. Well, two nights ago he missed. He wasn't so drunk. Yes, uh, 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 what's the matter? What did I hey, do? Hey, 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 wait a minute. Huh? Wait a minute. You two ain't saying it was Noel that knocked out Charlie, are you? Oh, 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 that's a hot one. No, it wouldn't hurt a flea. Everyone knows that. I... Look, you don't think that Noel really murdered Charlie, do you? No, Harry, as a matter of fact, we don't. In fact, we're sure he didn't. Come along, Inspector. We're going to have a talk with Officer Clancy. <laughs> Oh, sure, I understand, Mr. Drake. Only it's Christmas, you see. Well, I was planning on being with the kids. That's this... right, Clancy, it's Christmas. And no Christian is spending the day in jail for a crime he didn't commit. No, no, just a minute, Mr. Drake, just a minute. It was the man who seen Christian coming along across the street and recognized him. So what? He didn't see Christian murder anyone, did he? Well, sir, he seen somebody jump on Christian, and it was me who discovered Charlie's body later on when I was doing the regular beat. And since you learned there was a fight at Harry's bar earlier in the evening, you assumed that it was Charlie who attacked Christian, isn't it? Well, sir, knowing that the fight was about Christian's son, Joe, now, wouldn't you assume... We'll that... ask the question, Clancy, me by... Clancy, in your report, you stated that you discovered Charlie's body on Beacon Street around the corner from Gloucester, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct, sir. Would you mind coming with us and pointing out the identical spot where you first saw the body? Well, sir, you see, it's being Christmas and well, I... know it's Christmas. Now, look, either you'll come along or I'll get in touch with your boss. Who happens to be a friend of mine, and... Uh... Well, under those circumstances, all right, come. <laughs> Gentlemen, here we are. I was right there that I discovered the body. Okay. But how do you know that this is the corner of Beacon and Gloucester Street? 
All the same folks are covered in snow. I beg your pardon, sir, but if you've lived in Boston as long as I have, you'd know when you're at the corner of two streets. <laughs> we can't argue that, Inspector. This is Clancy's regular beat. He ought to know where he is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Drake. Now, if I've done all I can... Well, so just I'd a minute, Clancy. I've um, one of my cards here somewhere. Here we are. And would you be good enough to jot down briefly a description of where we are? Oh, it's all in my report, sir. Yes, yes, I know it is. But you see, the inspector and I are strangers in Boston. We'd like your personal description for future references. Well, it's against regulations. Uh, heck with regulations. Write it down. Let's get out of here. I'm cold. I'm sorry, sir. I can't obey your orders without permission from the sergeant. Well, if I guys say get permission. No, 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 never mind, inspector. I've uh, changed my mind. I don't think we'll need it. Clancy, I'm sorry, but you have to come with us while an autopsy is performed on the body of Charles of Justice. Sure, a nice Christmas with Dad in jail and Joe dead and everybody else having a party. All right, Mr. Christian, inside with you. Oh, Dad! Hello, kid. Oh. Merry Christmas. Well, Dad, what happened? Oh, gosh, yes, you really didn't kill anybody, did you? Did you, did you huh? Really? I guess not, son. But I'll let Inspector Danton and Mr. Drake tell you about it. Well, there isn't a great deal to tell. Inspector, have you the autopsy report? Yeah, I got it. Charlie Augustus died a heart attack and explosion just like you think it was. Heart attack? But I thought it was... See, your father wasn't sure that the man who attacked him was Charlie Augustus, Miss Christian. Oh. It was reading about his death in the paper the next morning that gave him the idea. Oh, Dad. I, I'm sorry, Mary. The things that Mr. Drake said about me last night were the truth. I, well, I saw a chance to make you kids well, think... Well, what of it? doesn't make any difference now that we know you didn't murder anybody. Thanks, son. Things will be different from now on. Losing Joe was kind of hard to take. Yes, there's a lot of fathers in the same spot, Clifton. They all find it hard to take. But somehow they do take it, and it's that sort of spirit that makes heroes out of chaps like Joe. You're right, of course. I know it now, and things will be different. Oh, Dad, it, it's just as though Joe were here. As though he heard you and, and was grinning at us and saying, That's swell, Dad. Merry Christmas. Hey, wait a minute. How did you know it wasn't Dad who murdered Charlie got to Mr. Drake? How'd you find out then? <laughs> It wasn't very hard, Jimmy. Harry, the owner of the bar, told us that your father didn't take part in the fight. And he also told us that Charles Augustus was sickly. So we had an autopsy performed to determine the exact nature of his death. Well, sure, sure, but how did you know? How did you guess? Don't ask him how he guessed, Bob. Great never guesses. Go on, Bob, tell him. No, I... I think I'll let uh, Officer Clancy do the honors. How about it, Clancy? <laughs> well, no, sir, that kind of pushed me in a spot. Was no fault of mine, have you know. I, I thought it was a hit and run drive when I first found the body. Then my report was all handed in, and if Inspector Danton hadn't squared things with the sergeant, I couldn't have fight me. But what happened? Why would you be in a fine kick? Well, miss, you see, it was like this. It seems that your dad there had a system of coming home. He always walked straight down across the street to the river, so he did. Which was something I didn't know at the time. Come on, come on, get to the point. <laughs> well, so you see, the signboards were covered with snow. So I couldn't see how to spell the name Gloucester. Gloucester's a sticker to spell, and, uh, well, me being a poor speller anyway, as I, thinking that it was the work of a hit and run driver, I said to myself, as I, thought make no difference now if I just lug this body around the corner to Beacon Street, which is a first class if you want to spell design. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the reason. And because of five body we found on Beacon. And Dad came straight down Gloucester. Well, I'll be a whiskerless Sandy floor. Oh, gee, holy gee, this is swell. This is the swellest Christmas we ever had. Oh, it certainly is. Listen, everybody, let's sing Christmas carols. That's the ticket. Can anyone play the piano? Can anyone play the piano? The inspector's practically a genius with the ivies. Come on, inspector, strike up a carol. Oh, now, oh, please. Please, 
Oh, come on, Inspector. It's Christmas. Okay, okay. You talked me into it. Fun let's be, everybody. How about Hot the Herald Angel Jet? Yeah, then it came upon the midnight clear. Children, we thought this was going to be such an unhappy Christmas. <laughs> let's sing, uh, Oh, come all ye faithful. Welcome back. Well, I found the little history of Caroline on Beacon Hill to be interesting. Not something I'd heard of. And apparently they still have people going door to door with, uh, or, you know, obviously not this year, but as of 2016, they still had people carrying on a tradition of uh, bell carolers. Uh, going uh, door to door in Beacon Hill with uh, uh, bells, and ringing those, and singing carols. I've always been fond of caroling as a uh, tradition. Got to go door to door caroling a couple, three times, and uh, also uh, done it in a nursing home. It'd be great if uh, there was more of that. The mystery here is pretty, you know, basic. If you knew uh, streets in Boston around the end of uh, World War II. I've never been uh, to Boston, have no idea how the streets run, so I'm just going to take their word that they're being accurate. And if uh, Boston uh, residents who happen to be listening to the program take issue, I will gladly entertain it. But I can't see the flaw just because I am just assuming it's correct. A lot of mystery programs, not all certainly, but a lot of the mystery radio programs did tend to have a little bit of lighter stories uh, around Christmas time. And I think part of that, it wasn't just, you know, to fit into the festive mood, but part of it was that, you know, they were churning out, you know, 45 to you know, 52 of these episodes per year. So the change of pace is definitely welcomed. Well, now I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And thank you to Jan, Patreon supporter since December 2019, currently supporting us at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. All right, well, that concludes our Christmas offerings. Again, you can find other Christmas-related uh, detective programs over at christmasfee.greatdetectives.net. And we also have our uh, amazing World of Radio Christmas special. You can listen to that over at amazing.greatdetectives.net. That will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Then next Thursday, I'll be on vacation, uh, but I will bring you something fun to listen to from our archives. And then in two weeks, we'll be back with another episode of Mystery is My Hobby. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>